Previously on Projects and Problems. I'm having it delivered. No, look in the what car. What are you talking about? How is it gray? I have white, I have glossy black, and I have polar blue. Cool updates on the way. Hey, Project Fam, stop right there. This video is not for you if these two things apply to you. Number one, it annoys you when people say Porsche instead of Porsche. And number two, if you're a Porsche purist who believes modifying cars is blasphemy and have this keep it original mentality so we could all look alike at cars and coffee, if you check both of these boxes, uh, this is not your episode. We're making some changes. Is wait for New York State to send me my title and with my title, I can register my car and put some plates on it. And if I got plates, then I can drive legally. Second thing is, Project Fam, you remember I went to Long Island and I picked up those wheels. It was a really hard deal for me to pass up. I picked them up. They were hollow. I picked it up. Those wheels were awesome. I did try my hand at painting them in black and, and putting a coat of clear coat on. Uh -oh. And that didn't work out as well as I want. So, hey, let me pause the video again. I love my wheels. I love my silver champion wheels. No one has them. They're 19 inch, but the tires are hard. They're not good for the winter time. So I need some all season tires. That's why I'm getting these black wheels for my all season tires. I could have actually used those wheels, especially now it's cold, it's winter time. I could have put those wheels on with some all season tires and been fine. But I had an opportunity to get these wheels professionally powder coated. Professionally powder coated. I met this brother, his name is Days. He has a shop here in Westchester. He does a really great job, Days Powder Coating. I'm on my way right now to pick up my wheels. I'm excited. You guys saw what it looked like before. I'll drop a little picture. I did try my best, but we're over here and we're gonna see what it looks like. Can I come in? Absolutely, come on in. Uh-oh. Oh! -oh. oh! You don't like automotive? I really don't like the clientele. Uh -oh. But it's a passion <laughs> that I have from when I was younger. Right. And I like to, you know, dip and dab. Yeah, these wheels right here were completely All right, all right. I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get close on these wheels now. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Oh my. Oh my. Oh, you, you gotta stop. I can see the flag in the background. Oh. These weren't supposed to come out the way they did. Did a little extra, a little extra to them because of the texture on the metal, the, right. um, the casting. Right. But we got it down to a satisfactory gloss level. Ooh, Shine. Satisfactory? Hold on, what do you mean satisfactory? I thought satisfactory <laughs> when I brought them in. No. When I brought them in, I thought they were satisfactory. <laughs> they were torn up when you brought them in. They were torn up. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my. We're pretty happy with them. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is this is gonna be it. This is gonna be it. There you go. Yep. Nothing's supposed to be there. That's what I'm talking about. Very nice. I I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I can't wait to see him on the car. Oh my. Well, I gotta I gotta get some rubber for it first. So. <laughs> Very nice. All right, so tell me about these wheels. Was it challenging? Um, when they came in, tell me about the condition, because you mentioned something about pitting. It, it, it wasn't really pitting, it was the casting marks on the face. Right. Um, and prior to me getting to that level, mm -hmm. I had to go through all the paint. Right. You had a lot of epoxy on there. Yeah. Um, the epoxy coating comes off, even in chemical, it comes off as a very thick layer. Right. Um, I didn't want to sandblast it with any coarse media because I didn't want to deteriorate the face, right. as much as it already was, I didn't want to make it worse, so I had to sit there and meticulously peel all that off, and then once it came off, 
and then I was able to sandblast it with uh, the appropriate media. Right. Once it was sandblasted, you could see that it had a bit of a profile on it. I had to come back and I had to sand them down a bit just to bring it back down a little bit. Wow. And that's how we got um, a much better uh, finish yeah, on that's it. That's like a five-step process. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's, it's all in the prep work. Right. So the process is, let me, let me see if I can get it right. The process is, First, you strip it using like a chemical stripper. Correct. All right. And after you strip it, you you mentioned something about sandblasting. Correct. All right. Then you sandblast it. Am I using the right term? Correct, Correct me if I'm wrong. Yep, no, you got it. Good. And after sandblasting, then you start adding your powder coat. Correct. All right. And how many coats of powder coat do you typically put on? That is a industry secret. Industry <laughs> secret. I don't need to know because it looks fire. Don't need to know. So after you put the powder coating, is there anything else that you need to do after that? After you put on the powder coating, obviously you let it, you know, you bring it into the oven, you let it cure. Mm -hmm. um, we do something else in between, mm -hmm. sometimes to get things a little different. More secrets. <laughs> Not necessarily secrets, mm -hmm. but pretty much the same thing. And you know, you see in other YouTube videos, mm -hmm. the same process, basically the same process. We all have a different way of doing things. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what I mean by that. Nice. So I got lucky. Dave said he doesn't prefer to work for automotive customers, I guess because they're too picky or they get, I don't know what the deal is, but. It's not so much that, it's just that after you've done automotive for such a long period of time, you want to move on to something else. Right. So when you have a client that comes in and he doesn't know what he wants and his right. expectations are different and he yeah. just makes a day harder for you. Yeah, that's me. You just, <laughs> you just sort of push them away a little bit, you know, and you know, you just stick with what you have and you continue doing what you love. I love doing artwork. I love doing furniture i love doing post-world war ii kitchens that's my nice. thing nice but that's 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 pretty much it these wheels are fire it's going to take me a minute to get them on the car so don't push it especially winter time is coming i don't know if i want to put them on in the winter time but these are going to look nice a few things i need to do i would like to have the ims changed on the car so the ims bearing which is the intermediate shaft bearing. This is a bearing that you could actually get a solution where it feeds oil and constantly lubricates the bearing, or you could just change the bearing to a better quality bearing, like a ceramic bearing. I do need to change my IMS bearing. Number two, since I'm there, I need to do a rear main seal. That's a seal, the back of the engine, it leaks. These are two issues on the 996 that are very common. And in order to get to the intermediate shaft bearing, I gotta take out the clutch. I might as well change the clutch. Uh, I might as well do it. So these are things that I need to do. The only question that I'm, I'm toying with in my mind right now is do I save up some money and pay someone to do it? Or do I also save up some money and do it myself? Uh -oh. Either way, I have to save up some money. 